Good morning. Welcome to Sunday. We typically do not work, film, edit anything on Sundays. We try to take the day off. We do work from time to time, sometimes for an hour or two if we got something pressing that really needs to be addressed. And now is one of those times, kind of. Winter is coming. It is almost the end of October. Let me get you guys set up. And I have a pretty big list of things to do. Rachel is off at our kids, helping to take care of the brand new grandbaby, which is awesome. I think they really appreciate it. She's having a blast spending time with the little one. Is basically like not even a week old, so it's still just like sleeps and eats and poops, and that's all it really does. All right, take you guys in the chicken coop with me. We got some eggs to collect. Another egg, another egg. We got some of those um, leghorn chickens. They lay these nice little white eggs. We did get our first, hey, really big white one the other day, which was really cool. How you guys doing on food? We have a lot of plants left over from the summer from when we did our farm stand. We grew a lot of different things from starts, from cuttings, to try to sell. And one of those things was uh, weeping willow. We would started them uh, way, way, way early in the year. Their roots are coming out the bottom. We just been, we keep them in the swimming pool and just keep like water in there and they absolutely love it. But there's some things that are in here that if we don't get them planted, they may not survive the winter. And I don't know how I'm gonna do this. So there are some other things like these three are pawpaw trees. We got those from our conservation district and I don't know exactly where Rachel wants to plant them. So those will have to wait. This was kind of cool. This is one of those um, shaggy bark oak trees. My dad started this for us. They found some seeds or nuts, acorns, oak trees have acorns um, at a park somewhere and they brought one home and they planted it and it grew. So I don't know where we're gonna plant this guy but I think he needs a home. This is one of our new maple trees we planted, what, two years ago now in the fall? And they were about this tall when we planted them and they probably tripled in size. They're absolutely beautiful. Beautiful colors this fall. This little guy right here is one of two Douglas firs that we planted that actually survived out of the 10 <laughs> that we planted. I thought they would be really cool having like a nice maple, dug fir, maple, dug fir all the way down this side of our property. But I just don't think they are, they deal well with moist conditions. And back here, the farther back we go on our property, the more moist it gets. Like sometimes that back corner back there doesn't even dry out till like late May, early June, before I can get back there with the tractor sometimes and not get stuck. 
but this one he looks like he's doing good so we're gonna head back that way where some of the other dug furs are that did not make it we'll dig up a couple of those and we'll put some willows back there weeping willows so they should man these colors are just great got a little holes in them a little bug damage but so here is one of the crispy ones as you can see it did not fare well for some reason it's like they they did okay for a little while we tried even putting these like weed fabric things down it didn't really help much rachel came out and put some nice bamboo stakes in for them and yeah dead tree I got one of them out. I broke off some of his roots, but that is a lot of healthy roots on this guy. Now I know how much white-tailed deer love willows. They will eat that thing down in no time so i have a bunch of tree rings that we typically put out in the winter it's just made of some fencing material i'll set this over top of that tree it should help protect it until it gets like well and decently established in fact i probably need to get all of these things out and put them on a lot of our baby trees to protect them don't know where else to put the other ones i want to plant at least two more we might put one up that way and maybe one over on the other side of the property i'm feeling crappy man i've been like one of our grandkids cooper he's been sick he's been coming over here i think he got me sick i think he got rachel sick rachel fought it off with the elderberry tincture quite well me on the other hand i am not faring too well so we'll see how far i can get and my adventures and my desires of things to accomplish today. Well, can you guess? Another dug fir. This one survived most of the year this year until the end of the season and it just gave up the ghost and all of its needles fell off, so. It's kind of obvious that at this point that Douglas firs do not do well in Michigan. Aren't they like a Pacific Northwest type tree? I know they really thrive in like Oregon, Washington, places like that. Maybe they just don't do well in Michigan. I bought them from a tree farm in Michigan, so I was expecting them to do well, but maybe they just buy them and bring them in and sell them as little saplings. All right, buddy. Well, he was doing better. Better than the other one, but not better enough. soil is hard and there's a lot of tree roots over here there's there was one two three four huge box elder trees that used to live here that we cut down so this guy should this is a very moist area so it should thrive here and be a nice anchor point it doesn't really block our view from the house when we look out into the back pasture at all it's kind of off to the side a little bit so it should be great spot for him to live i realized something as i was pulling up and i saw our van next door that we i don't think we've ever officially or made an announcement on this channel and told you guys about our second youtube channel so if you're a longtime follower, you may have noticed we have not been posting any off-grid cabin videos on this channel anymore. 
All of that content is now being posted on our second YouTube channel. It's called Todd and Rachel. That's the really simple name for it right now. We may change it again at some point. We have some ideas of a name that we like a little bit better, but so off-grid cabin videos, kayaking, boating, anything that's not homesteading is now posted over on that other channel. We've never really like made an announcement and formally told you guys. So a lot of you haven't found us. And then when you do find us, you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know you had another channel. So take this as your official notice. We will leave a link to that other channel down in the description below. But I need to get some food. I got all my trees planted. I need to go get those rings, fence rings from the back and put those on the trees. And then we'll see what we can get into next. It's been a couple days since the video was last with you guys. That was Sunday. I was not feeling well that day. I called it quits. I went inside, I rested for the rest of the day. But I do have some good news. My bride is back home, maybe not full time. You might have to make some trips back up to help with the baby, but. Probably more helping with like laundry and cleaning the house because they've they got a handle on baby. Yeah. They're, they're doing a good job. They're doing a great job. Yeah. I got to go up and see him the other day. That was awesome and fun. I got to hold him, his, um, can we tell him his name? His middle name, They na his middle name is Todd. This. Yes. It's so, so sweet. Um, so we'll just leave it at that. It was a huge honor for for you to yes. have a grandbaby named after you. Melted and my little heart. Yes. <laughs> he's just all chunk and just rolls for days. Furry. Furry, yes, really hairy. <laughs> yeah. So it was really cool. Um, changing gears from the video, has the way the video started, we are on to honey extractin. extraction. Extraction. Our bees did not do very well this year. I think we've got up to about four hives at some point. And then we lost some queens. We tried to do some splits. We tried to do a bunch of stuff and we didn't do any of it well this year. So we only ended up with one super of honey from our bees this year. Mm -hmm. so it's we're gonna... okay. I mean, I think it's more important that we keep some alive through the winter. So yes. um, always more important to do that. And we leave honey plenty of honey on for the bees that are mm -hmm. left. This is just one little box of extra. Um, we sold a lot of our honey this year at the barn gallons? stand. 10 yes, 10 gallons. 10 of, gallons worth of honey, I think. Um, and so we have to restock ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that was from our surplus and we, we have a little surplus, but um, I would call that our emergency honey and we need some real good honey stocked back up for ourselves and our family. Yep, so well, we're gonna get started. Yeah. Get things going, we got most of the gear out, but we gotta do a little bit more setup and then we can get started. Yeah, and I think we're gonna do it slightly differently today. So when we get to that point, I'll tell you what my plan is. Yeah, oh. I guess it's pretty good. I mean, that's a good frame, but I'm seeing some There's frames. There's some frames that are, yeah, they don't have as much honey in As much honey. That one's good. That one's like hardly not built out all the way. Yeah. There's really not a lot of honey in here. There's probably eight frames out of the ten that actually are worth it. So we feel kind of weird making such a big mess with all this equipment for this little bit of honey, but I mean, we need it. We need so, it, it's all yeah. out, and we're probably gonna give most of it away. We did only get six frames, not eight like I thought, but there's two two of the other ones still have some uncapped honey, some nectar in them. We're just gonna give that back to the bees. They'll come and harvest it and take it all back to their hive and put it to use this winter. Put the top under. Put the bucket under 
over there? Yeah, last okay. year we had to put our feet up on the yellow. Well, I think at some point we screwed it down to the board. Or like some two by fours we put down and yeah. we screwed it down. It's gonna be really off balance too this time. So normally, um, we're doing what I said, something different. Normally, this little system would sit on top of our five gallon bucket and pre-filter the honey. And it does a really good job filtering it um, because as you could see, there was like chunks of wax caffeines, bee pollen, things like that coming out of the honey. I watched a reel that Sweetbriar Farm posted and he keeps a lot. He does a huge honey harvest every year. And he said what he does is he just does it directly in the bucket, lets it sit three to four days, all that junk floats to the top and you can just scrape off the top of the junk and render that wax down. And then you're left with pretty clean honey. Um, now, at that step, I may do it through this. If you use this first, for us anyway, I don't know that professional beekeepers have this problem, but for us, it makes the process take so long because you're constantly having to clean this out and it gets all gunked up with wax. And it just takes forever ever to filter. So um, I'm gonna try that process this year and I'm hoping it goes just a lot easier. Once this is all done, we'll just take this bucket in the house, keep it nice and warm, because if you let your honey get too cool, it'll just make the process, I think, a little harder for the wax to float to the top. So um, we'll just I'll just take it in the house and set it by the heat register with the lid on. And then uh, three days, come back and look at it and get it all cleaned up. I doubt that'll be part of this video, but uh, maybe in a future video or Facebook or Instagram will show you that process. Everything's gonna go back in this box and then this box will basically just go outside. Out back by the bees, the bees will come in by the thousands and they'll clean all of this up. They'll take all of that nectar that was uncapped. They'll take all the honey that's left in these frames, whatever they can get their little hands on, they're gonna take it and they'll take it back to their colony and to their hives and they will store it and they'll be able to use that for the winter. So none of it really goes to waste. We do the same, in fact, with like the extractor. When we're done with this today, it's just gonna sit outside for probably the next two days. And the bees will come in and they will clean every last little bit of honey yeah. that was down there that Rachel couldn't get with the spatula that she just went and got. So nothing really goes to waste at all. And they make your job so much easier cleaning because yeah. they do a really good job yeah. cleaning it. They do way better than I could possibly try to do. Yeah. And then once they're done, then we'll get out like soapy water and we'll spray this down and we'll clean it and we'll put it back in the barn and it'll sit there until next year when we need it again. Are you filming this? Yeah. I'm going to eat it. It's going to, the bees, that they have enough for winter. <laughs> Should we just let it sit? Yeah. You guys are seeing me like this, but we don't have enough to sell or give away. So don't worry about it. It's only for us. Mm. 